At least one of them was here, sir. I found this waistband down on the beach. You know, that's Peter Blood's house. I know what that could mean. You remain here. Have Rogers follow me. out at once, Peter. Yeah, that's finished. You know what it means to be caught helping runaway slaves? I guess you're fidgeting like an old woman. Aye, but we'll fidget worse at the end of a rope. Dr. Blood, Colonel Ramsey. I've come about some escaped slaves. And with a surprising lack of manners, too. We found a slave's waistband on the beach. You're liable to find anything on the beach, even seashells. I just removed one from his foot. That should hold you, Angus. Thank you, Dr. Blood. Now, Colonel, you wanted to see me about some slaves. I'm afraid I have none to sell you. You see, this land and everything on it is free. I wasn't speaking of buying. You were a pirate once, Blood, before your reform. If you've taken to stealing slaves now, I... Perhaps, Colonel, you also heard that I was once a slave. An ex-slave can hardly be expected to like slavery. Or slave owners. That's the Lady Isabella. Excuse me. Isabella. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. This is Colonel Ramsey. Colonel, this is... I had the honor of meeting the Lady Isabella at the governor's reception. Oh, if you have business to discuss with my fiancé, Colonel, please don't let me detain you. Fiancé? Yes. Dr. Blood and I are to be married next week. Oh, you're a lucky devil, Blood. I'm aware of that, Colonel. Well, we have a long search ahead of us. Well, I certainly won't recover my property standing here. Delightful as the company is. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're feeling better, Angus. Poor Angus has had the gout. I'm afraid too much rich living since we gave up the sea. You're not beginning to regret giving up the sea. My dear. I have no regrets, whatever.
Who is this? <laughs> Manuelito. He's a present from my cousin, Don Ramon. He sent him to me with a letter saying he'd be here in time for our wedding. Oh, very generous of him to honor the marriage of a Spanish noblewoman to an ex-pirate. We will not speak of that again. All right, my dear. Let's go in the house. And Angus will prepare us one of his Highland dinners. It's good to see you, my lady. <laughs> Let's know that bad cooking. I've kept you healthy enough. <laughs> healthy, I grant you, but no paunch. And how can I be respectable without a paunch? <laughs> After what you're used to in Spain, this is a poor threshold to ask you to cross. It's the one I want to get used to. <laughs> Don Peter, but I feel at home already. I'm glad, dear. Angus! You better feed our, um, our patients. Oh, and they can leave as soon as it gets dark. Here you are, ladies. There's food, drink, and be sure to get some sleep. Son los esclavos escaparos? Well, they are good. Peter, what you're doing is dangerous. No matter how you feel, helping escaped slaves is against the law. If they come to me for help, how can I turn them out? You helped a man in England once, and your reward was prison. A man can't live like a man and not make enemies. But well, forgive me, we should be planning our wedding, and I should be making gallant speeches to you. It's not for speeches that I love you, Peter. Ah, Hillary, you didn't forget, plover. Beautiful, my boy. Beautiful. Mm. I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> Your Excellency, I have the honor to present Don Ramon del Monte Alegre of Cartagena, Lady Isabella's cousin. Welcome to Jamaica, sir. It's delightful to see you, Hillary. Did you dispose of your cargo in Portobello? An average of 17 pounds a head, sir, I'm glad to report. 17 pounds? The price of slaves is improving. Your company should be delighted. I'll take that fine, sleek hen there. Go prepare them. Yes, sir. After leaving Portobello, we put into Cartagena. Cartagena was sacked by pirates. Sacked? The royal governor murdered, and almost a hundred others dead. By gad, sir, if you have need of a stout English ship to help hunt down this pirate vermin... The pirate was English. English? No, that's impossible. How can you be sure? Who, who identified him? I did. At a time when England fights for her life against Louis of France, it is most regrettable that your pirates attack your only friend and ally. I assure you, Don Ramon, we shall do everything within our power to bring these rogues to justice. Meanwhile, we should at least have the pleasure of your company, Don Ramon, at the wedding of your cousin, Lady Isabella. There will be no wedding. The pirate who raided Cartagena was Captain Peter Blood. But Dr. Blood is no pirate, gentlemen. He's a position and well thought of in these parts. There must be some mistake. I wish it were a mistake, but too many people recognize his blue and silver uniform. Captain Evans himself showed me this blackguard through his telescope. He made no secret of it. His pirates roaming drunk through the streets of Cartagena boasted they were Blood's men. Your Excellency's servant. Knowing the way I feel about Isabella, you must realize the difficult position in which this places me. Uh, wait, Don Ramon. This whole thing has come as somewhat of a shock, but Spain is our ally and I have a duty to my king. If there is one shred of evidence against Peter Blood, he shall hang like any other pirate. Good day, gentlemen. To us. To our happiness. To our life together. Peter, you've spilled your luck. That's a bad omen. Take your omens out of here, you Highland hag, or I'll spill your luck. Here is omen. Peter, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's the best a poor surgeon can do. I might have done better for you in the old days. <laughs> My present for you. To 
be the blood with all my love. I'll wear it here, always. What is it? I don't know. I'll go and see. Not even by stealth. An excellent meal, Sir Henry. More poetry, Larry. Thank you. The Lady Isabella to see you, Your Excellency. Convey to the Lady Isabella my regrets. This time you may convey them yourself, Sir Henry. I've tried for two days to see you and to see Peter in prison. Why have you refused me? Necessity has tied my hands, my dear. What necessity? The need to silence Peter Blood against the Royal Africa Company's profitable trading in human lives? The slave trade is not illegal, my dear Isabella. Piracy is, a fact which your fiancé seems to have forgotten. Who could prove such an absurd accusation? The proof will be thoroughly examined by the English court, where Blood will stand trial. He was tried once before by an English court. During the Monmouth Rebellion in England, Dr. Peter Blood had the misfortune of putting healing above all else. While helping the wounded, he was accused of disloyalty to the Crown. An outrageous government sentenced him to slavery in the West Indies. Forced to work as a slave along with those unfortunates, he helped as a surgeon in the rebellion. Peter Blood, stealing a guard's uniform, led his fellow men in their path to escape. Never was fighting so bitter as between those that were imprisoned and the guards so misguided that only the urge to kill their less fortunate fellows remained. So they fought, as only slaves can fight for their freedom. And at last, the prison gates were opened. A score of hunted men on a tiny island, capture meant death. There was a ship in the harbor, a slave ship. Faint from hunger and thirst, but fighting desperately for their lives, they took their one last chance. Cautiously, silently, a sound meant death. They climbed aboard, surprising the crew. In a short time, the ship was theirs. And what now? A ship, a crew, men without a country sailing under the only colors left to them, the black flag of piracy. There was only one life left to these outcasts and their leader, Peter Blood. Soon he became Captain Blood, known as the most courageous and daring pirate in all the Caribbean. Forced by sheer necessity, ships of every nation became his prize, but only for the gold they carried, and not for bloodshed. Never once did he attack a ship flying the English flag, until in the harbor at Larcher lay an English frigate of 50 guns guarding the slave colony. He entered into combat at the risk of losing their ship their only home, even possible capture and return to slavery. But their cause could not be denied. Captain Blood and his crew proved their worth even when the frigate made a futile attempt to ram their ship. Victory was theirs. They could have ransacked the city for its gold and its jewels. But at dawn, the victor only demanded the release of the slaves. The Crown, recognizing his honesty and gallantry, granted him a full pardon. A free man, he went back to the practice of medicine. Could that be the man who burned and gutted Cartagena? I'm afraid it was, Isabella. Your cousin Don Ramon and I saw Captain Blood at Cartagena wearing the same blue and silver uniform which he has made infamous throughout the Caribbean. But surely your personal knowledge of Peter makes you realize this is impossible? After all, he was once a pirate, my dear. None of us can deny that. Your Excellency will please excuse me.
what did they say, Lassie? Politicians. What is the condition of your ship, Hillary? I can sail on the morning tide. And so you shall. And take your prisoner aboard with you tonight. You were right in the first place, Angus. Get all Captain Blood's old crew together. They'll know what to do. Aye, lassie. Begging your pardon, my lady. I'll pass the word. is to be kept in irons until we're well at sea. Captain's orders. All secure, sir. Mr. Ainsworth, get your men aloft to make sail. A skip alongside, sir. Surprise, I'm about to set sail. Yes, I know. That's why I had to see you, to apologize. Oh, there's no need of that, Isabella. Please, please let me talk to you one moment, alone. Why, of course, my dear. Come, come below. Here now, what's this? Ain't he elegant? He looks like a blooming admiral. Here you, what's your name? Manuelito Amaya, Doma de Doni, Isabella de Sotomayor. Ain't it the blinking card? No me molesters. Here now, then, you even speak English. You play, I dance. Give him a tune and let's see the little monkey dance. <laughs> the way I feel about you can well understand what a distasteful situation this is for me. I can grant you no favors, Isabella. But I ask for nothing, Hillary. I only came here to say I'm sorry for the way I acted yesterday. Oh, I'm glad you came. It'll give me something to look forward to on the long voyage to England and back. You know, Isabella, from the time you boarded my ship in Spain, I've always dared to hope, even though I knew you were pledged to another. <laughs>
What's going on up there? Speak up, boy. Pirates, sir. They came over the side. They released the prisoner. Out of my way. Helen, please don't leave me alone. I'm afraid. Lock yourself in, Isabella. <laughs> citizen reversed to type. You see the pirate in his true colors, my dear. Now, do you believe that blood was in Cartagena? No. Senorita, distrae a los hombres lo suficiente para dar tiempo al rescate? Angus. Aye, aye, sir. The crew, are they with us? All but a few of them. They're just on us average citizens who appreciate a wee bit of piracy. <laughs> Any man who doesn't want to join us has my permission to go over the side and swim ashore. Men, this is mutiny. I warn you that every one of you will swing from the yardarm. You won't be able to see it. You'd be down in the cabin with a bit of fluff. <laughs> <laughs> what we want is a captain who's on deck when the fighting's on. <laughs> Take him below. Now, my dear, they'll take you ashore. I'll wait for you. It's no use to wait. I've no life to offer you now. They've driven me back to piracy. And another pardon from the king would be a miracle indeed. Oh, Peter, I'll pray for a miracle. Swede. Aye, aye. See they get ashore safely. Aye, aye, sir. Angus? Aye, aye, sir. We make sail at once. All hands are off to make sail! I'll wait for you forever. Tortuga. Helmsman, Hollis North, and Porter East. Let's we sail for Tortuga.
bring him up now. I let him dance on the yard arm. Yeah! Man, man, quiet. We have no quarrel with Captain Evans, only with His Majesty's government. What's so bad about that? It's given us a chance to resume our chosen profession. <laughs> I can promise that every one of you will be caught and hanged without distinction. Throw him overboard! Probably I should listen to my men, but my retirement has made me a bit soft. Put him over the side. <laughs> You've water and food enough for three days. If your rowing's as stubborn as the set of your jaw, you'll make Port Royal long before that. I'll find you again, Flood. I'll find every one of you. First, I suggest you find Port Royal. <laughs> Hail ho! Ship off the starboard bow! for a Frenchman, if she is a Frenchman. She's a pilot, you'd like us. Yes. Put two shots across our bow. I show her our true colors. They shall hold her still while we take a closer look. Raise your hands and take again the oath of piracy. We, the hunted, have become hunters. We dedicate ourselves to a life and death brotherhood of buccaneers. All valuables seized shall become common funds. For the future security of each and every one of you, we pledge these rewards. Send me enemies such as you. <laughs> come in, come in, my friend. Ah, we have much to say. It is so good when all comrades meet. You don't know how much I miss you, my friend. <laughs> come on, we get drunk. Everybody get drunk. <laughs> oh, I poor the near forgot. The crew of my friend's ship is don't be thirsty so long I got fine Spanish wine in my hold, huh? <laughs> I give the order. Oh, a passenger I pick up in Tortuga. You will forgive Thomas. He doesn't understand about courtesies. I am Celeste. Peter Blood, mademoiselle. Captain Blood? You are the one the Spanish called on Pedro Sangre? <laughs> I'm flattered. But you're French, aren't you? I am international. Tomas has acquired many beautiful things since I knew him. You find me beautiful? Very beautiful, mademoiselle. I think, Capitaine, we are two people who know what we want. Tomas is a pig. Gold doubloons, Spanish money, and new. And those earrings, Peruvian emeralds, if I'm not mistaken. A gift from Tomas. <laughs> a gift from that pig? When I want presents from him, I take. You do not find me interesting, Captain? Fascinating. I can hardly take my eyes from... Yes, Captain. Those earrings. My earrings are all that intrigue you. You English have only business in mind. You're just like the Dutch. You're a pig like Thomas. 
some brilliance for such a raid. What plunder? What, 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 what? <laughs> Only Captain Blood has such magnificent brilliance. It seems another man has stolen my brilliance. You see, I didn't make the raid. You didn't? Thomas, do you know what this? Oh, I'm so sorry, my friend. He's not your friend. He insulted me. Didn't you hear me? I have been insulted by that English pig. Shut up! We are talking. These doubloons, where did they come from? And the earrings she's wearing. Oh, those earrings. Well, one night, this one and me, we are seated in a cafe with a two-faced sea scavenger by the name Easterling. Easterling? Sells out of Martinique? That's the kid. We are drinking. Me, a little bit too much. This one, next morning, she is wearing the earrings. How she get them? She can't remember. What happened to the rest of the set? What set? The celebrated jewel collection sent by the King of Spain to the governor's wife in Cartagena. Besides the earrings, there was a necklace of Peruvian emeralds and a fabulous tiara of emeralds, rubies and diamonds. That cheap tramp is still in. Only the earrings. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should stay drunk a little bit longer, no? Maybe your memory returns a little bit, no? No. The entire collection was stolen in the raid on Cartagena. Do you think it could have been Easterling? Possible. What can I do to help? Tell me where to find Easterling. Martinique. But he's a very dangerous man. Not to be trusted. I think maybe I go with you. No, the sun is too alone. I say it at once for Martinique. Oh, but my friend, everything I have is yours. Everything. I appreciate your generosity, my friend. But everything in the world I want is in Port Royal. Only the earrings, eh? <laughs> Surely, Lady Isabella, you appreciate the gravity of these charges that Captain Evans has brought against you? Aiding in the escape of a prisoner of the Crown? Fostering a mutiny aboard the ship Congo Queen, which resulted in its capture by pirates. Mutiny, treason, and piracy. Have you nothing to say in your own defense? If words can erase some of the dishonor that your deeds have brought upon our name, you must speak, Isabella. If you have no objection, I would like to have another try at the slave lad. Bring him forward. On the night Blood's pirates stole my ship, did you not say these words to the senorita? Distrahi a los hombres suficiente para dar tiempo al rescate? He did not. I was addressing the question to the lad. Well? If Your Excellency is unfamiliar with Spanish, those words translated are, did I entertain the sailors long enough to allow the good captain to be rescued? I think a touch of the lash might loosen his tongue. No doubt. The boy is innocent. Would you add perjury to the other charges, Isabella? Stop it, stop it. We'll stop when every one of that crew is caught and hanged, and Captain Peter Blood hanged high off of them all. Come, lad, speak up. Yes, speak, slave, while you still have a tongue. We shall get nothing out of him, Hillary. He's in need of another dose. Take him back. No. No more flogging. He had nothing to do with it. It was all my doing. I planned the escape. You admit this crime? Crime? Is it a crime to help the man you love? He was being sent away, an innocent man, to stand a hopeless trial and die on the gallows. And why? All because of the jealousy of one man and the greed of another. You are hardly qualified to judge between justice and injustice. You are under arrest. 
and shall proceed under guard to the Viceroy's court at Portobello, there to be sentenced by the Spanish authorities. But if the captain wants to sail into Martinique as a Dutch trading ship, that's his business. Aye, but covering up our guns in a strange port is our business. And I don't like it. I tell you, it's daft. Altering the shape of a ship is like changing a leopard's spots. And I tell you, Swede, that'll bring you nothing but trouble. Ah, you're full of Scotch superstition. How am I now? Have you seen what the captain's up to? No. Take a look for yourself. Is it the bonniest place in the town? What about Easterling? I've never been able to find hide nor hair of him or his crew, but they say that nightingale in there is his light of love. Keep looking for him. De noche, con tu soledad, de noche, te escucho llorar. I hoped you'd honor me by accepting a glass of wine. 
I... I haven't seen you here before. A misfortune which I am pleased to repair. Captain Peter Vandermeer of the Dutch West India Company. Such gallantry. I would have taken you for a Spaniard. <laughs> Do you think our low countries produce only tulips and cheeses? Sometimes Holland exports gentlemen. It was your way of speaking. It sounded more Spanish. An inheritance from my mother. You see, she was Spanish. Uh, born in Sevilla. What a coincidence. I also was born there. What was her name? Oh, uh, you wouldn't know it. It was a most undistinguished family. And it's quite obvious, senorita, that you are a young lady of distinction and refinement. Bring us some of your finest canary wine. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Drink up, lad. <laughs> Monsieur Easterling, you were not expected until tomorrow. That I can see. I will tell Mademoiselle Amanda you are here. Now. Who is that man? Peter Vandermeer, with the Dutch West India Company. Peter Vandermeer. You know him, perhaps? Uh, I think I do. Tell her nothing. You've not seen me here. Is that clear? I can scarcely restrain my curiosity. How these lovely stones come to surround such a lovely neck. Whoever gave it to you must have been a connoisseur of beauty, a collector of treasures, a man familiar with the riches of Panama or perhaps Cartagena. I am not familiar with its history. At least you must remember the name of the man whose wealth must have equaled his affection to give you such a gift. Please, let us not speak of him. Senor Vandermeer, you are a merchant. You have a ship that will sail away from here soon. Perhaps. Would it not be possible for you to take one passenger? Excuse me, I must go and sing now. When do you expect Easterling back? Please, I cannot talk here. One or two questions answered, and my ship might sail at dawn. Please come back later, tonight. I live at 37 Rue de la Porte. Find what you wanted, Captain Vandermeer? Oh, but apparently you did, Easterling. Search him. Oh, please, my dear friend, I'm a man of experience. Raise the hands. Hi! 
A Dutch murderer. What a rare fish for the Martinique authorities' net. They might think it odd that a Dutch merchant uses an Egyptian dagger. What's your business in Martinique? Besides murder. I'll handle this. Who are you? Peter Vandermeer of the Dutch West India Company. Uh, <laughs> and I'm His Majesty, the King of England. When you christened yourself mighty, you should have picked a man we didn't know. Vandermeer is a very dear friend of ours. <laughs> Peter Blood with all my love. Not Captain Blood. Aye. The fear did me fool for a bit. It's himself. And a sight for sore eyes. This is a great Captain Blood. The retired buccaneer. With a blinking king's pardon to cheat the gallows. Oh, wait, my friend. I've waited for years. The great slave liberator. Well, let's see you liberate yourself from this. Put that down, you fool. Remember, Larcher, when you ran my ship aground and I had to swim ashore with a broken leg? And now you're trying to steal my woman. Listen before this knife forgets you are my so good friend. Are you protecting him? No. I'm protecting an investment. 10,000 pieces of eight on his head. 10,000 pieces of eight? Yeah. You're right, Egyptian. You got brains. One of us needs them. Sit over there. Please. Gentlemen of such, shall I say, value must be treated with the most careful respect. Get us some rum. Why not? Maybe the rum will give you more sense than you show now. You must have gone soft in the head to think you could take a ship or a woman away from George Easterling. <laughs> My interest was in the necklace, not the girl. A necklace? Yes, from the set you stole, when you made the raid on Cartagena. Me? Oh, it's a flattering thought. But Cartagena's a bit large for the likes of my ship. That's one port I'd never raid. And who did? Coulevin. Coulevin? The French one from Santo Domingo? Ah. Oh, Coulevin hasn't even a first-class ship. Oh, yes, he is. The best in the Caribbean. A double-decker with so many guns, she looks like a porcupine. Where's that blighter with the rum? Egyptian! You say you got the emerald set from Coulevin? Aye. In a trade it was. He had too many emeralds, and I had too many uh, female admirers, you might say. <laughs> what did you do with the earrings? Ah, that wild cat of Tomas Velasquez stole them from me. Uh, while I slept. Up to it, you dirty squid. Ten thousand pieces of eight. That's what I call a good night's work, Easterling. You are partners, I presume? Partners me, I. He works for me. You are wrong, my friend. From now, we divide everything in two parts. The same. Did you also intend to divide the girl's necklace with him? Well, that's one way of dissolving a partnership. Not a bad little fella, but tricky. Awful tricky. Even did you can't trust him. You can't trust anyone these days. <laughs>
Francis. Arrest that man. After him. It's blood. There's a price on his head. It's blood, all right. Looks like there might be a price on your head. Santa Domingo. There we'll call on Madame Duval. Ah, she knows every scurvy buccaneer in the Caribbean. Madame Duval it is. All hands on deck! Ready to weigh anchor! You make poor jokes. I ordered brandy, not bilge water. The dish is brandy. This will taste like the inside of a pirate's boot. Get the proprietor. You want me? No, I want the proprietor. You have found me. A thousand pardons, madam. What were you shouting at a waiter for? Here, taste this, if you can stand it. It's the best you can find in Santo Domingo. Not so good as the worst in Paris. Sit down, please. Get on with your work, Pierre. How would you like to buy some real brandy? Nobody can buy that while the French war goes on. How much have you been able to smuggle, monsieur? Madame is quick. What would you say to a boatload? A handsome, full-bodied, vintage, perfectly aged, just like yourself. Like myself, a brandy cannot be tested by words, monsieur. Follow me. Cigar? Ah, it takes me back. You remind me of a stevedore. I once knew in Le Havre. A chest like a whale. <laughs> <laughs> you also remind me of an early love. A three-master, copper bottom. Worthy in any sea. <laughs> <laughs> so I remind you of a ship. Bravo, my friend. At my age and still seaworthy. <laughs> Since you know so many seafaring men, I'm in need of one myself, with a stout ship and uh, not too many scruples. Who would I know with scruples? I heard talk of a man named Coulevin. Not from me. In my business, it's better not to know such a one. Enough about scruples. Tomorrow we talk about the brandy. Tonight we drink, eh? Come in. Madame Duval. Speak up. This is my friend. It's Coulevin. He's got need of a surgeon. Coulevin? Never heard of him needing a surgeon. Cutler's wound in the leg. Dr. Legrand is out there, asleep in a rum bottle. Tell Pierre, he'll find him. Where are you going? For more brandy. We'd be ashamed to launch our friendship in a teacup. I'll be back in an hour. In an hour it is. I'll be here. 
Au revoir, Captain Blood. <laughs> Madame Duval said you would point out the doctor. Over there. Doctor? Wake up! Wake up! Why is it they never sent for a doctor in the daytime? Always in the middle of the night. Can you answer me that? Wake up, wake up. Leave him alone. He's in no condition to go. I'll attend to the matter myself. You? I is a doctor, too. With a steadier hand than our friend here, as your eyes should tell you. Well, come on. You say you're in a hurry. Lead the way. Where to? Ship's laying off Point North. Point North, eh? Wait a minute here, mates. There's a wrong smell to this. Why didn't Madame Duval tell me you was a surgeon? Here, Peter, you're believing these. Good luck, Captain. What's he still doing here? Oh, he got too drunk. The other doctor went in his place. What other? The one that refused the drink. They didn't like it. I thought you knew him. I know him all right. Call the port police. Yes. Doc. Wake up. Yeah. We've got a call to make. Yeah. As soon as I collect 10,000 pieces of eight, I'll keep you pickled for the rest of your life. Yeah. Why is it nobody sends for a doctor in the daytime? Always in the middle of the night. You can't answer me that, can you? Well, where's the patient? One of your men said it was an emergency. This way. Wait outside. Who are you? The surgeon. Who do you think? You took long enough getting here. You're lucky I came at all, Captain Coulevin. It was only for Madame Duval. Now stop gapping and look at my leg. Well, how does a man get such an ugly wound? In a sword fight, perhaps. Hmm? Perhaps. Why did you wait until tonight for treatment? That's not your concern. True, true. Only perhaps I might have to saw it off. Here, drink this. You won't feel the pain. The doctor is still with him. Come, come, knock again. My time's precious. Well, how is he? Not so loud. He's asleep. Then wake him up. I have to talk to him. Well, speak up, man. I'm talking to you. You blundering idiot. Get a light, someone. Hurry up there. Get a light. Now give it to me. Now get out of here, all of you. I'll wake you myself. You too. All right, Kulva, wake up. Wake up. It's something you was here. Confounded man, open your eyes. I've only got a minute. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, now listen carefully. The new viceroy from Spain will reach Portobello in three days. It would be most undesirable to let the gold be transferred to a Spanish ship of war. Keep awake, can't you? You've got to sail on tomorrow's tide. I'm after something else, too. Live gold. The market's short on slaves. We can pick up a cargo from the prison plantation. Also, I'm particularly interested in a certain aristocratic Spanish beauty, the Lady Isabella. Do you understand? Remember it. And don't fail me. Oh. 
Portobello, the night of the third day. Be careful. See that he's better by morning. Monsieur Doctor, haven't you finished with him yet? The captain's very badly hurt. There's no more I can do here. I need help. He must be taken ashore immediately. Laura's the boat. Come, we'll take him out of here. Hurry now. Put a blanket over him. I tell you, this one is the surgeon. That one in the cabin is Captain Blood. Kulva, where are you taking him? Ashore. The surgeon's orders. Aha! Where is that surgeon? One fish you'll never catch. This is your credentials. I have just promoted you to Colonel Juan Orozco, military advisor to the new viceroy at Portobello. <laughs> You're a wizard, Tomas. This looks authentic enough to be the Royal Seal of Spain. It is. I personally borrow it from Royal Customs at Cadiz. <laughs> <laughs> now for the human form. One must be prepared for all occasions and emergencies. You know, it's too bad you don't want to be Admiral. I got one human form here with gold braid. It gets you a 21-gun salute. <laughs> all a 12-gun firing squad. I prefer to remain as inconspicuous as possible. As you wish, my friend. Now, this I borrow from a Spanish colonel who have no further use for it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are his papers, which I changed a little bit. <laughs> you should have been a statesman. No, no. Too dangerous. In our profession, we live longer, also better. <laughs> well, my friend, we celebrate this little masquerade someday, don't you? Adios, amigo. Adios. Thank you. Wait! You'll be more welcome in Portobello with the Spanish flag flying from your masthead, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I presume, Isabella, you've had enough of this unpleasantness, imprisoned here in Portobello. Why did you come here, Don Ramon? To bring you the good news, my dear. The King of Spain has granted you a pardon. Then, Peter, Captain Blood has proved his innocence. Tell me when, how? Captain Blood has proved nothing beyond the fact that he is a pirate. But you said a pardon. There is one small condition. You will send Captain Blood a message asking him to meet you at a nearby village. He is to come alone. Where you will capture him. For a relative, my dear cousin, you have a very low opinion of me. I wouldn't tell you where Peter Blood is, even if I knew. Thank your king and tell him I'm quite comfortable in my present surroundings. Make ready a boat to take me ashore. Then drop anchor. They're in the narrow straits between the rocks. Bottle up the channel. Aye, aye, sir. And don't forget you're an English crew, paid to fight under the Spanish flag. Chavez, this must be attended to immediately. As you know, I leave for Spain this week. Your pardon, Excellency, General. But a ship has just arrived, and Colonel Orozco is on his way here now. Colonel Orozco? Military attaché to the Marquess de Miramar. The new Viceroy was not due to arrive for three days. Colonel Juan Orozco, military attaché to the Marquess de Miramar.
Your Excellency, may I present my credentials? I'm uh, rather curious, Colonel, as to why you preceded the Marquess. I was ordered to Your Excellency. When it was learned in Jamaica, the pirates are on their way to capture your shipment of Manila gold. A raid on Portobello? The attack will come tonight or tomorrow at dawn at the latest. My instructions are to prepare a um, surprise for them. And I suggest that we dispense with formalities and uh, examine the defenses of your city. Uh, <clears throat> General Chavez, whom I believe you haven't met, is in charge of our defenses, Colonel. Delighted to have the General accompany us. But we should leave immediately. Excellency, this is entirely without precedent. No doubt. But unfortunately, pirates have more respect for cannon than precedent. Your Excellency. You have no better cannon, General? You, Coronel, must remember that this is not Spain. It will not even be Portobello, unless the city is defended with better weapons than these. Fortunately, the Marques sent guns and mercenary gunners, both English, from Port Royal. Englishmen to defend Spanish soil? But the Marques believes that the combination of English cannon and Spanish courage will prove the match of any pirate on the seas. I'll have the cannon brought ashore, and we'll dig the gun emplacements uh, over there. Uh, with your concurrence, General. You don't plan to mount the cannon in the fort? Not unless I want to lose them. You see, your fort will fall the first hour of attack. The gun emplacements must be dug by sunset. Impossible. Nothing is impossible, General, except to live forever. Your Excellency, you have a prison here. Turn out all prisoners. We need the help of every man, woman, and child. Come, General. I'll show you where to dig. Have you gone daft, man? Aim for the Congo Queen. I'll not do it, Peter. You don't know what you're doing. Hey, one point lower. You're sinking our last hope of getting home. Have I ever failed you, Angus? Every gun sighted at the waterline. Every gun sighted at the waterline. Fire! Keep firing. I don't want to see a splinter left afloat. Well, lads, we're at the mercy of a madman. If we must murder our own ship, let's do a good job. These guns covered. We're going, you two. Get busy. Don't stand there gawking. Come and help me. I couldn't believe it was you. I hope nobody will. But how could you take such a risk? It's madness. Please trust me. I found out who raided Cartagena. Oh, Peter. I prayed for that. I'm going to order you back to prison so you'll be safe until this is over. No place is safe. Don't send me away from you. Go back to the others and keep praying. 
I've no further use of the prisoners, General. You may have them returned. Thank you, Coronel. Get the prisoners back. Reload! Hold your fire! Keep on target! Don't move a gun! <laughs> Things aren't as bad as you think, Angus. <laughs> Get your chin back in the Highlands. Not bad, he says. He's not a madman at all. He's a first-class lunatic. Captain Hillary Evans. Captain Evans. Your Excellency. This is most unexpected. You chose a bad time to bring your ship into our harbor, Captain. I came overland, Your Excellency, to clear my ship's cargo papers. The attack has begun. Pirates, Captain Evans. Captain Gullivan, their guns cannot reach us. One more broadside will put the fini to them. of life. I told him his cannon were useless. Why aren't these batteries firing, Colonel? Because the range is still too great, Excellency. Captain Blood. Captain Blood? But this is Colonel Orozco. This is Peter Blood, the pirate who sacked Cartagena, who doubtless came here for the same purpose. I claim him for my prisoner. This is true? That I'm Blood? Yes. But I did not raid Cartagena. Lies of a pirate who stole my ship. Why, even those gunners are part of Blood's crew. I did what I had to, Excellency, to learn the truth about Cartagena and to save your own port from his friends who attack it now. He stole my ship to cheat an English gallows, just as he stole false credentials to get your Spanish gold. I urge that you have him shot before it's too late. Place those men under guard. A few moments will convince your excellency that my men and I are the only chance of saving the city. A few moments are all he needs to destroy it. Your excellency, a messenger. 
What is it? Immediate surrender. Our ship is entering the harbor. Once in range of your city, it will open fire unless you pull down your flag. These are the orders of our leader, Captain Peter Blood. Your orders? Not unless I can be in two places at once. The man on that ship is Coulevin, hiding behind my name and wearing my uniform, as he did in Cartagena. Now Your Excellency can observe his ship striking where my guns can destroy it. She stuck fast on the Congo Queen, which I sunk there myself. How can his guns find that target in the dark? Because they still point at the same spot where the Congo Queen went down. Lower the way! Lower the way, you filthy scum! Back to the lighter's turn, and we'll pull her off! They'll have her free in seconds. It's our last chance, Excellency. Open fire! If you're tricking me, you'll be shot on the spot. If you give that order, Blood, the Viceroy will die on this spot. Captain Evans! In a little while, the city will be mine. Be sensible, and your life will be spared. Fire! Angus! Open fire! The mast's first! What's happened, and you'll not be here to tell it. I may outlive you, Captain Evans.
This is our last celebration as honest pirates. <laughs> Tomorrow, we must return to peaceful pursuits. And to our wives. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Isabella. <laughs> hey. Here's the rest of your clothes, Peter Blood. I'll not have you running off to get married half-dressed. <laughs> Particularly at the governor's mansion. Long life and happiness to our captain and his lady. Hooray! It's difficult to say goodbye. You've been such good and loyal friends that Don't I... make speech, Captain. You've got better things to do than talk. <laughs> All right, go on with the celebration. And when I return, I don't expect to find any food or rum left. That's my last order to you. From now on, all his orders are for me. Oh. <laughs>